you can call Don and Mike anytime, toll free at 1-877-365-3636. That's 1-877-365-3636. They're ready to believe you. Yes, it is. Yes. But it's owned by Infinity, which means it's, it's up double extra good. Got to be good if it's owned by Infinity. So anyway, we're back on in uh, Las Vegas. This will be a live clear every day starting at uh, 12 noon. Viva Las Vegas. Las Vegas time. And uh, hi, it's uh, great to have you guys with us. We will, of course, be all over the Chinese embassy thing today. <laughs> <laughs> I mean the Chinese spy plane oh, thing. We're, right. we're going to be involving the Chinese embassy in today's show. Uh -huh. Day 1500. <laughs> As we continue to try to solve the crises. Good. Because I think we're in international ambassadors of love. Mm -hmm. I won't tell you exactly what we got planned, but we've, we've got something worked uh, worked out today. So the, uh, the weekend. Uh, let's get right to the weekend. Weekend. The weekend, baby. <laughs> Woo! What are you? Hours of non stop partying. Woohoo! Van Halen weekend. Yeah, baby. All weekend long, baby. Rock on. <laughs> you only rock once. God, we oh, we barely made it out of New York. Right. We barely made it out. Everybody's trying to get out of New York on Friday, which is not unusual, but it, it was just particularly intense on uh, this particular Friday. We uh, bust balls to get out of the radio station on time to make it to LaGuardia to right. get on the airplane. Mm -hmm. We get to LaGuardia in plenty of time. We go through the, the, the Disneyland-like lines at the airport, you know, where you think... You know, that, that's how they get you Disneyland, where they get you in a line and you think... Yeah, they invented that thing where you go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth and you think you're at the end of the line when, in fact, you're, you're just at the beginning. Right. right, so we wait in line, we wait in line, and we're halfway through the line to check in for the flight when all of a sudden we see on the screen in front of us, flight to Washington canceled. Ah, shocker. Right, canceled. Now, not canceled because of bad weather. Right. Although it was raining. Yeah. Canceled 
because there were too many airplanes at Reagan National Airport. And I guess that they had some kind of a, a backup earlier in the day, and they had some planes that had just been, and boy, this would piss me off. I was one of these people. You get on a plane, and then you just sit on the tarmac mm. for three hours. So your plane couldn't take off and go to National Airport because there were too many planes that had to take off from that. Yes, that there makes no, sense. There were no parking spots. Yeah, uh -huh. I, mean, that's, I mean, they're small air, but LaGuardia and uh, and Reagan National. For and our, that's the big debate in Washington, too, to call it Reagan National. It's really National, national Airport. Airport. Listen, do what I do. Just say, where are you going? Where are you going out of? Dulles or Alzheimer's? <laughs> <laughs> I say, uh, I'm flying out of Alzheimer's. Alzheimer's <laughs> International Airport. So we, we wait in this incredibly long line, and then they, then they announce that there will be a later flight to D.C. Uh -huh. They say, but what you want to do is, even though the flight's not going to leave for an hour and a half, what you want to do is go through security, go to the ticket booth, and get your color-coded boarding pass. Numbered boarding pass. Your color-coded co co numbered yes, boarding course. pass. Why the color coding? I'm well, not, this this is a foreign concept to me. I'm going to explain this to you. This Something is, Chinese? This is why. <laughs> Might as well be. <laughs> this is why Delta <laughs> Airlines <laughs> is simply <laughs> the most precisely run airline <laughs> are in the sky. Very good. Okay. <laughs> They're the infinity broadcasting <laughs> of airline companies. You fly them often. We do. You're frequent flyers on Delta. So we get there and they give us the card. They give us an orange boarding pass right. that has a number on it right now at this point the flight has been delayed by two hours our original flight so we're waiting in line we're doing what we never do we wait in line to get on the airplane a half hour before the flight is supposed to even start boarding what time is your flight supposed to the one that was canceled what time i mean how late eight, are you now eight o'clock eight thirty then 9.30. Okay. They said the, fl the flight's scheduled for 9.30, but probably won't leave until quarter to 10 or 10 o'clock. Mm -hmm. So at 8.30, we start lining up. All right. This is, as it turns out, a ridiculous move. Unnecessary. Uh, just a moronic move, mm -hmm. because for a half hour, what we're doing is, Buzz, me, and Rob, we are jockeying for position <laughs> in this line that we think somehow is going to get us on the plane first, yeah. because... We've been at the airport for two hours, right. and we were given the magical orange boarding passes. Right. But at least we got a good meal out of it. You oh, didn't yeah. even mention the Yankee Clipper. <laughs> the Yankee Clipper. Clipper. True. You guys always talk about the YC. The, the Yankee, Yankee Clipper. Clipper. It if was you, really, really good this if, night, if you, especially. If you like dried chicken, there's no finer place for it than the Yankee Clipper. No, the, 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 the rice was drier. Well, that's, it the rice had been cooked, and then it warmed so long it stopped being cooked anymore. It was hard again. <laughs> but I enjoyed it especially looking at the menu board. <laughs> oh, all right. Somebody, I can't imagine I don't know who, who did it. I can't imagine who, but somebody, Hooligan. they write it with uh, chalk, and someone wrote, instead of uh, meatloaf, wrote ass loaf. <laughs> I don't know who would do that. And someone wrote F U on the top of the menu board. And, like, really F U? Yeah. yeah. I can't imagine who did it. I can't imagine who would do that. <laughs> somebody. Who would be up to that? Why is the odds overwhelming that one of them's in this room? <laughs> you might be right. <laughs> So we're standing like lemmings at the, at, the, at the end of this hallway, and we're waiting to board the plane. Now, it's a half hour before we even sport, supposed to board the plane. Okay. And we noticed that people who have been sitting in the chairs, what they're doing is they're standing up, and they're trying to walk over and horn in on our area where we've been. There are three ladies in front of us, so technically... Uh, me and uh, Buzz and Rob, we are guy four, five, and six, right, to get on the airplane. Yeah. God, what a nightmare! All of a sudden, these people who have just been sitting around lounging, <laughs> they figure because they, <clears throat> excuse me, because they haven't been in line, right, that they can just Help. come up and butt in. Right. So for 20 minutes, we go through this dance with these people, where these guys would come and stand up, and we would each position our body yeah. so as to block them out of the line, right? Because right. we're so obsessed with getting on this goddamn airplane. Sure. And, and furthermore, it's a pisser when the plane is two hours late and the people, the representatives from the airline, <laughs> are sitting at the little kiosk right. and they're reading magazines and doing crossword puzzles and laughing. <laughs> yeah, just because they're on the clock 
They're not going anywhere. Right. right. They're working at the airport. They're living in Queens. They're going home. <laughs> They're having a great time. And at, and at about 10 until 9, one of them looks up at us because now there's a mob. There's about 50 people jockeying for position. <laughs> right. One of them looks up and says, I don't even know what you're waiting in line for. We said, to get on the airplane. We're not going to board by a line. We're going to board by the color of your boarding pass. And is this a revelation to you when you hear yep. this? This is a revelation. It's festival seating on the airplane. There are no assigned seats. All we have now are these color-coded cards with the numbers on it, which we were told we had to have in order to guarantee us a seat on the plane. Now, well, keep in mind, we, so amazing. We, BS. Right. We've been there two hours early, so we had the orange. We were positive mm -hmm. that because we had the magic orange ticket, right. we were going to be the first on the plane. What's that? Imagine our shock when at... Five after nine, they announced they're going to start boarding the flight. The guy gets on, and what a prick the guy is, because he's looking right at us, because we've been jockeying for, for position. Good evening, the Delta Shuttle to Reagan National Airport. At this time, we will start boarding. Pause, pause, looks at us. Any customers with... Red boarding passes. Now, at this point, there's a stampede <laughs> from the back. Red. With all the people who have the red passes. Who are just delighted and yeah. shocked and, and just <laughs> gleeful that they miraculously have had their color code called. Now, when they get to the front of the line, the guy says, Hold on, please. If you have a red boarding pass, we are only boarding passes numbered 0 through 20. Zero through twenty. Why are they making it this complicated? I don't know. So now you got the people who have come all the way to the front. Now they're looking at their at their cards and they're going, ah, oh, crap! I'm number twenty five. I'm number thirty eight. But the good news is for you guys is the odds are there will be other numbers in the red section called before the orange section. Yeah, well. that's not good for us. No, I mean I'm joking. Right. 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 Fantastic. So, yeah. so we're mad. They do <laughs> ten through twenty in the red, and then they do. 20 through 40 in the red. Then they wait and they say, now we will start the orange boarding passes. What's the plane? The Spruce Goose? <laughs> How many people are we accommodating? About 150 people yeah. on the plane. Right. Oh, wow. So now they say they're going to do the orange. And again, looking right at us, he says, 1 through 30. 1 through 30. So again, we look. <laughs> And God damn it, if I don't have number 40, <laughs> Buzz has got like 41, right. but you're next, right? Rob's got 42. Nice. So finally, we're waiting, we're waiting. The guy says, again, looking right at us, he goes, now we'll be boarding rows 30 through 40. 30 through 40 only. Now, at this point, he's done 20 rows at a time up to this point. Right. But I think what he's doing, he's hedging his bets. <laughs> yeah, right. The, and, and maybe I'm paranoid, but I think that all of this is focused just at us because we've been there for an hour. <laughs> but he's still trying to dick us out of getting on the airplane. <laughs> sounds, it just sounds like they're making more work for themselves. So I look at my ticket like I've won the lottery, and I go, ha, ha, ha. See ya. 40. <laughs> Got it. See ya. On the plane. Save your seats, guys. <laughs> Save your seats. And, and as I go past, the guy looks really upset. That I've got the lucky number, <laughs> but I'm actually on the plane. <laughs> you actually are in the middle of the pack. You know, he was trying to get you to be maybe the last person to board. And once again, as we go down the the little uh, thing that connects the, uh, the ramp, yeah, the, the the covered thing, you get as soon as you turn a corner and you think you're going to walk on the plane, you realize that you're in another line now, right. another line mm -hmm. just to get your seat on the plane. Yeah, and it's festival seating on a plane, which I I can imagine. I mean, it's it's so darn easy when you have your seat assignments. I yeah. can imagine what festival seating is like <laughs> on an airplane. So it sucks. We finally we anyway. Long story short, we finally got the seats. When they we, say festival seating, can I can you get on the plane if your number is called first and sit in the front row of the plane? Yes. Yes. Wow. Which is why we had been lining up mm -hmm. because. We wanted to be in the first row of the plane because the plane was two hours late. What time did you guys finally get the uh, rolling FM to the for, for the forty-minute wait on the tarmac at LaGuardia? Quarter till ten. Quarter till, quarter till <laughs> ten. Something about that. God. You know, and the three of us, you know, sitting together. Yeah. Three numb nuts sitting together, <laughs> happy, delighted, very happy, very happy. We were, and mm -hmm. 
as always, I fell asleep on the airplane. Right. right. So I don't know what. <clears throat> excuse me. I don't know what happened, but I know that there was some. Was there some mishap with the service or with the coffee or? Oh, uh, with, with Rob. Yeah, yeah. Ray, Rob should tell this. He ordered a coke from uh, from the flight attendant. Well, you know, I've got a long-standing theory that they put only the best pilots on that shuttle route. <laughs> and I think they're trying to match up the pilots with the uh, the flight attendants. Because these people didn't even look like they were qualified to take the bags out of the plane. I mean, it just really didn't look like they knew what they were doing. No. Right. And at one point, the guy comes to me and says, he didn't have a thick, outrageous accent or anything, but he said, would you like something to drink? Coffee? I said, I'd love a Coke. He says, okay. And he poured me a cup of coffee. And he put it right in front of me, and I said, no, 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 I don't want coffee, I want a Coke. He says, would you like a Coke, too? I said, no, 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 just a Coke. And, of course, just the cup of Coke with six ice cubes in it. And then I handed him back the coffee, and I believe he tried Well, it's to... prime time for coffee, 10 o'clock at night. Sure, and I think he tried to give Buzz coffee, too. I, I said, I'll have a Coke, and he said, would you like cream? <laughs> so he was stuck on that coffee thing. <laughs> Naturally, Buzz. <laughs> Naturally. Naturally. <laughs> Naturally. And, you know, I know that Delta Airlines is a sponsor of this show, and we will continue to fly Delta Airlines, but on oh, behalf yeah. of all the poor schmucks who get in these uh, Schindler's List type planes, mm -hmm. I'd just like to say, if you're on an airplane and you're being dicked around like this, and they ask if you want a drink, really, I know you're already paying a cheap fare, <laughs> but is it so much just to give you the whole can of soda pop? No, they can't do that. Is it too much to ask? No, you know what they got to do? They got to give you one of those little, like, uh, top of the... A uh, Tylenol bottle, a uh, uh, NyQuil bottle, very small, little, teeny glass. Mm -hmm. They put five ice cubes in it, and that way they can make, make one can of soda. You go to three people, yeah. maybe maybe four people. Right. <laughs> and then you ask for more, and it's like you've asked them to turn the plane around. What? Yeah. Yeah, I bet you could. Uh, could you reasonably say, can I have the whole can, please? I have asked. And they say no? And the answer has been no. <laughs> oh, God. It has been no. But anyway, we made it back, yeah. boys. I know you're gonna <laughs> tell us the train is better. Let me tell you, okay? I had a, I, I had a 7:40 train. All right. I, how many trips have we made to New York? I don't know. About, about ten. ten. About ten. One time out of the ten has that uh, has that train not left at precisely 7:40. Now, is is it longer? Yeah. Does it take longer? Yeah. But it's always and sometimes it's very crowded. It was very crowded Friday night. But that train left at 7:40 once again, and it, it's just a. You know, it is the civilized way to travel. You can you can chill out. You know, you can spread out if it's not too crowded. And usually by Philadelphia, even if it's crowded coming out of New York, by Philadelphia the train empties out, and uh, and you can get two seats to yourself and spread out and read and have a good time. Well, you should know that normally when we fly back, at some point we look at each other and we think, huh. Mike's not even to Philadelphia now, okay. right? Well, do you know that this time we looked at our watches and we said. <laughs> Do you realize he's probably already at home? Right. And we still were What not... time did you all get home? I got home way after midnight. Way after midnight? Way after midnight. Because, I mean, I get home right at about midnight. No, I do. Yeah, so, I mean, that after. is the one the one thing. But it was uh, it was a little gamey. It was the smell of ass on the train that I was in again. Well, we're going to do it again next week. We're going back up next week. So get set for the, the whole thing over again. All right. I, I urge you guys one of these days, you know, just to try it. Just try the experience. You know, it's uh, it's fun. It's actually fun. I don't. I don't mind the the time because it's just very. It's very relaxed. Is it crowded? Yeah, but it's not the same kind of deal. It's not the same. It just seems more efficient. But you don't take that bullet train, right? You don't take. No, the they don't have that. They, I think they have that. Maybe the last one of those might leave at seven. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. But it's. Uh, it, you know, it, it moves. It books. You know, you only, only make a few stops, and there, there's only one moment of sheer panic, <laughs> because you got to realize most people that are taking the train. Are, are doing so for probably the same reasons I did. You don't, you don't like to fly. You're just a nervous, worrisome kind of individual. And coming out of Baltimore's uh, Union Station, when we, when we pulled out of Baltimore, um, I looked to the front, and I, I didn't look, because the first thing I was reading the magazine, and I went, I smelled smoke. I mean, I smelled real heavy-duty smoke. That ain't good. And I look up at the front of the train compartment, and I see smoke. And then I, uh, I look out uh, of the left, and I, I really wasn't paying attention, and I realized at this moment that uh, the smoke is on the outside and that we are in a tunnel. And uh, that's when you start to hear the murmur, 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 murmur. And it gets a little more urgent. Murmur, murmur, smoke, fire. Is this a smoke? Tunnel, fire, smoke, smoke, tunnel, fire, fire, smoke, fire.
and one lady is like, I don't understand why. There's smoke outside. Can you see the lights? Look at the lights inside the tunnel. There's smoke. There's some kind of fire. And I'm sitting there, okay. I mean, the train's moving at a pretty good clip of speed, and then the conductor got on and said, apparently the world's smokiest freight train had gone through the tunnel immediately before, and that was a... That was the only glitch. That was the only oh. uh, the only moment there. You yeah. had it better than us. Except for the woman who was sitting next to me. Uh, and I, I actually let her have the seat to herself after we got past Philadelphia. <laughs> who uh, I think was mad at Luquita uh, when she was yelling into her cell phone. I'm going to F you up, yo. <laughs> I mean, oh, wow. Okay. Wow. Should I, right. what, what the F's going on, yo? I'm going to F you up, yo. <laughs> F, it, it, I, I, well, you're it, sitting there with your, I'm your CBS, <laughs> CBS store bag. <laughs> a sign around your neck that says, please rape me. She was actually very, very polite until she got on the cell phone and was obviously extremely upset at someone who was supposed to go over, I think, and uh, house sit for her or something like that. Yeah. So it was F you up. I'm going to F you up. <laughs> I'm going to F her up. And then, like, hi there. <laughs> Excuse me. I'm going to go back to reading my Esquire magazine. <laughs> I was also aggravated with my family on Friday. Because for a while, well, it was when we were in that stupid Yankee Clipper restaurant. All right, having dinner. Which is like eating in the, the cafeteria at Oz, if you ever seen the HBO show. Yeah, right. And, and I was trying to call because at this point it looked like the flight might be canceled. Mm -hmm. Like they were going to cancel all the flights out of New York. So I'm trying to call my wife, who was out with the girlfriends, shocker, on Friday night. <laughs> and I couldn't get a hold of her. And I, just, and I, had, I had specifically told her, leave your cell phone turned on in case there's a problem. Because flights are always getting canceled. So leave your cell phone on. So I kept trying to call, kept trying to call, kept trying to call. Couldn't get through. I'm sitting at the Yankee Clipper. I'm getting pissed off. I call my ho call my house, and Bart, after about 20 rings, picks up the phone and goes, <laughs> party line. And I said, hi, uh, listen, it's it's me. I'm still in New York. Yeah. I said, <laughs> I said there's a chance that I might not be back tonight. Uh, Dad, I, uh, I got a call on the other line. I said, I am calling you from New York. I am calling you to tell you that my flight is canceled. I cannot get a hold of mom. Uh, Dad, I got a call on the other line. I was, I was, I was on the phone when you called. And, I, and at that point, I said, "Fine." You know, if you if you happen to wander into mom sometime, <laughs> tell her that I might be home sometime this weekend. You've done your job. You tried to communicate. Uh -huh. Goodbye. Click. But everything, everything was fine. Made it home. Uh, and I know that uh, recently I've talked a lot about the, uh, the luxurious items that I've purchased my wife. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we won the raffle, and I, and I bought her that uh, necklace thing she wanted. And right. She wanted a car, and I bought her a new car. But uh, I think yesterday... I topped myself. No. I really topped myself. Bought her a new shredder. Oh, a shredder. Went out and bought her a brand new paper shredder. Oh, fantastic. Because that is the uh, heavy type, duty one type of luxurious life that my wife leads. Shredders are cool. She's upstairs uh, going through whatever old, you know, tax time, going through papers and shredding stuff. And she said to me, uh, gee, this is a pain in the ass because, you know, I got, I got to put one piece of paper in. takes like 30 seconds to shred. Right. I said, baby. Here we go. Office Depot right now. You, me, come on. Let's go. Get a shredder. And, uh, you know, like like every time they go into any store, they try to sell you the most expensive one. The, the one that could actually not only shred documents, but it could probably handle a pretty good-sized tree limb. Yeah, we're standing at Office Depot, and we have no idea because I've got a thousand of them. And the guy says to me, what are you looking for? And I said... Well, we're looking for something that shreds more than one piece of paper at a time, like five or seven. He says, well, this one right here, this is the one I would recommend. This is the Toothy 3000. <laughs> now, this thing costs 170 bucks. Right. Meanwhile, just sitting right around the corner in a big stack is virtually the same thing that's 50 bucks. Mm -hmm. So I say to the guy, uh, excuse me. What's the difference? Right. And the guy says to me, <laughs> great salesman that he is, um, about a hundred and twenty dollars. <laughs> <laughs> I like a sales guy like that. This guy had no idea. <laughs> no clue. Right? So 
We bought the we bought the cheap one of that's course. Good. That's a that's a good one for that price, I would think. And it uh, it made her happy. Good. And then uh, keep your fingers out of there. Then it was out. Oh, do you know we laughed when we looked at this thing when we got it home? <laughs> that they have the Ghostbuster symbols on the top. You know the universal sure. red with the slash through the middle. There's a picture. That shows a guy putting his hand in there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right, through it. There's another picture that has a guy who has his necktie caught in there. Right. Mm -hmm. There's a third picture with a guy who's got his tongue in there. <laughs> <laughs> and we were looking at this, and I can only imagine that someone put their hand in, yeah. someone got their necktie caught in there, right. and some idiot <laughs> put his tongue into the shirt. Put his tongue, and it's you know it's a self-feeding machine, so it's not as though you know you have to press a button while. As soon as it starts, right, it's going. The actual pressure is what uh, powers the mechanism. So apparently, you know, with this legitimate society that we live in, some idiot put his finger in. Maybe it was the same guy put his tie in. <laughs> Probably. And, uh, and put his tongue in this thing. <laughs> so we get done with this, and then it's at this point that Bart announces, now keep in mind he's driving, he's got his license. Making your life more convenient. Yes, he announces that he's going to go to the mall. Oh. And I said, well, I'll go with you. And for some reason, he was really, really against this. <laughs> and normally, he likes driving. You know, he he's offered to take free ride. You need to go to the grocery store. Do you need to pick up dry cleaning? Right. You need to go to Seven Eleven. He's really against this. Well, as it turns out, last uh, la la not last night, Saturday night, he was going to the movies mm -hmm. with a friend mm -hmm. of uh, the opposite sex. Yes, as it turns out, of the opposite sex. Okay, a date. No, I've been, I have been ordered not to use the word date, that it's not a date. Bart, I am very, very sorry. That was not a date. It was going to the movies with a friend. I, I misspoke. It was going to the movies. Yes. And uh, he went uh, because he had to buy uh, a birthday gift for this person. Okay. Okay. Just stick with me now. Keep okay, it Okay, I'm with you. I'm not, not going to jump in anymore. I'm just trying to figure when, out. When your girls get older, you're going to be put through the same exercise. So you, these semantics are important here. Is that what you're yeah, saying? Yeah, very to me? important. All right, very good. So we walk into the mall, and I say, what do you think you're going to get this person mm -hmm. for this person's birthday for this non-date that you're going on tonight? And, and it was at that point that he said, uh, Dad... I'll meet you right back here in 30 minutes. Goodbye. Hmm. So you're at the mall. I'm at the mall, but I'm dumped. So he and wants to go out and he wants to shop on his own. Yeah, and how pathetic is this? I followed him around. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I had, I had nothing to get at the mall. Did you follow him around because you had nothing to get at the mall, or did you follow him around out of just a little curiosity? A little of both. To yeah. what stores he might be rolling into. A little of both. You know, and uh, he went into... Uh, yeah. Victoria's Secret. Yeah, Victoria's Secret. Right. Uh, no, no, he went to the, uh, you know, to the card shop, and he went into like uh, a knickknack shop. Right. And uh, as it turns out, the the gift that he ended up buying was a gift. I finally walked into the store that he was in after thirty minutes, and I said, "Hey," he said, "What are you doing here?" And I said, "I said you said thirty minutes, and it's been almost an hour. I'm ready to go." And at that point, I just walked over by one of these shelves and I said, now I don't know much about this mystery person you're buying this gift for, but you just can't help yourself. <laughs> but this looks good. Why don't you get this? And he said to me, yeah, I was thinking about getting that. I was looking at that. I was thinking about getting that. Oh, that's good. Well, no, he's lying. He had not. I, oh, I, I don't he was think being sarcastic. But he ended yeah, up buying it. Oh, he did. He ended up buying it. Uh -huh. but the gift that, in essence, I helped him select the gift. Uh, I don't want to pry. I mean, I, I know this is sensitive it's territory. A, it's a, it was a knickknack. It was from the Hallmark store. So we're standing in line, and we're waiting to buy this, and I make another crucial mistake. Oh. I say, let me see the card. Uh -oh. No. Yeah. <laughs> no. I said, come on, let me see the card. No. Okay, so I can't see the card. <laughs> I'm really not supposed to know what the gift is. But you kind of helped him with the gift. Yeah, and, you know, we... We went our separate ways. We split when we went to the mall because he watered his privacy. So we go back home, and he's getting ready to go out. And uh, I say, yeah. And again, I, I know I'm going to get minimal information from this kid. He's a typical teenager now. I'm going to get minimal information, but I'm going to pry as much as I can. <laughs> I say to him, what movie are you going to see? And he says, we're going to see Heartbreakers. And I said, wait a minute. Hold on a second. It was... 
last weekend that Mom and I went to see this movie. It's the, the movie with uh, Sigourney Weaver and Jennifer Love Hewitt and Gene Hackman. It's supposed to be real good. Yeah, well, no, it sucks. We saw it, but okay. at the time we thought it was good. And we had asked Bart to go with us to this movie, mm -hmm. and he said, No, I don't want to go. It looks like it sucks. So, suddenly, you know, right. depending, I guess, on who he's going to the movie with, kind of a good take a friend out movie. Yeah, that movie. I don't want to say. <laughs> I don't want to say date movie. No. That movie is uh, is okay to go to. Right. And uh, then he told me. <laughs> now this I think is funny. <laughs> that he's in the theater, and he's sitting down waiting to watch the movie, <laughs> and into the theater come. Some friends of ours, parents of another kid who goes to his school. Right. So they got up and left the theater. And they went and they went and watched another movie instead. Because the parents were in there? Yes. So you're you're right now at at primary adults are you yeah. know, are, are persona non grata. I, we uh, we are you know, that's that's the way it is. I said to him, It's a gigantic theater. It's dark. He said, Yeah, but Dad, they came over and said hello. Mm. I said well, yeah, of course. You, you know, your your friends with their kid. He said, "No, so we just uh, we went we we went to Pokemon." <laughs> I, said, I said, "You went to Pokemon? Why would you go to see Pokemon?" He said, "Because it was the only other movie showing at the same time." <laughs> oh, no, no, that, that, that's it, true. We're you know, yeah, get ready. It's uh, right. it's difficult. It's starting with through all that trouble, right, to just, avoid uh, adults. Yeah, just to avoid you know, even though just sit in a movie theater, right, right, and specifically but, to avoid parents. Yes, but, but whatever. More power to them. <laughs> uh, Saturday night, we uh, socialized with the Brits. Uh, that's, uh, that's getting to be kind of a regular deal. Yes, it is. And uh, all I've got to say is that, yeah, first off, I was not drunk. Okay? okay good. I'd like to start by saying that. Yes. I was not drunk. Of course you weren't. I wasn't. I, I said, of course you weren't. I had a couple of drinks. Right. But I wasn't drunk. There was no dancing at all. No grinding? There was no grinding. No man-on-man -man butt action? No, no, no. Okay. But something happened <laughs> that disturbed me oh. as as we were leaving their house. Someone else's behavior disturbed you? Yes. Was the behavior directed at you? Yes. No. It disturbed me greatly. Was it behavior from another man? Of course it was. If it was behavior from Hello. Hey, honey. Yeah, my boo boo. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm up to. Are you listening at all? Yeah, I, I am. And um, when you come home tonight, I have. I ran into the mom that saw Bart at the theater, so I have extra information for you. All right. Well, now I've handled all this correctly, right? I mean, all the things I'm, I'm not allowed to say, I haven't said. Yeah, that's fine. Right. Okay. So, oh, but you have this extra information. Right. <laughs> Fantastic. You know, it's so great. So these parents were actually, he was right to leave the theater. But oh, he was? I mean, that totally justifies no, his action. No, that's not. No. Well, then, then. First of all, he said hi first. They would have never even noticed him. They yelled, he yelled out. And he's a very polite man. Oh, yeah, nice. he yelled out. But then, oh, but then, you know, but, booming deep voice. But then they spied at him, right? Then they were sitting in front of him. I don't know what he's so paranoid about, but that I'll, I'll chat with you about it tonight. All right. So anyway, <laughs> do you remember when this happened when we were leaving the Brits' house? You know, I, I didn't see that. Okay. What happened? We're walking out the front door. Because I was in front of you when when you squealed like a little girl. <laughs> there was. <laughs> let me say throughout the whole evening, there had been no dancing. Right. None of the crazy stuff. A little mellow evening with you and the Brits. Very mellow. A little drinking, but manly conversation. On the way out, the fellow, he said to me something along the lines of, Hey, mate, you know we never danced tonight. And I said, oh, come on, knock it off. We stop it with that. I'm taking crap about that on the radio show. <laughs> and he reached over and grabbed my ball. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he gra it's not like he grazed them. He wow, he grabbed my ball. <laughs> that no, is and you, and you extremely. Have your pants on at the time, so yeah, yeah, really I mean, no reason. Of course, I had my pants. That is that's very disturbing. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's very disturbing. That behavior. bothered me, and I said, "Hey, what are you, what are you doing?" He says, you're my mate. <laughs> He's like, uh, I think I know what the deal is. I think the guy is just completely secure 
with his uh, masculinity. I think that's why he did it. That's like a rugby move or something like that. I, I mean, awful. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, do you tell me. I mean, you know the guy. I don't know the guy. I've never it's seen a rugby player grab another guy's balls. Also, well, darling, you have let him on. I mean, you have to take some <laughs> responsibility. What do you mean I've let him on? Well, you, did, you made the first move the other night. <laughs> <laughs> you knocked that off. Well, Frida, what do you think? Do you think this guy has uh, homosexual tendencies? No, he does not. See? He's just, he, he just getting the reaction. Action. You know, it's the same reason we all give my husband a hard time. He's easy to get a reaction from. Yeah, well, he got the reaction. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he got the reaction. I was what did you deck him? I was, no, I, you want to know? I'm not a violent man. No, I, and then, as a matter of fact, you're the one who said, let me and you sit in the back seat. I remember that part. Oh, when we were coming back from on dinner? The way, on the way to the restaurant, I was the designated driver, so I was, you know, hurt. I only had a glass hey, of water. Hey, listen, get this straight. You sat in the back seat with the guy? After he had just been fondled at his... No, 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 no. Honey, you're lying. The fondling came at his home oh. when we were leaving his home. Oh. So this Not happened before dinner? And no, room. after dinner. Oh, see, so after dinner, see, what happened was... the house. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, after we got back, oh, after we went uh, uh, to their house for a few minutes. After, yes. Oh, well. Uh, That's when the fondling happened. Oh, all right. I mean, Christ, and my move with simply getting in the back seat is because, isn't that most times how couples do it if, if you're going together? Like, the way the rules are is such, uh, the way I understand okay. them, that uh, when uh, you are, say, the guy is fine and there's not a designated driver situation and the guy is driving, it's normally guy, guy. Woman, woman. It's normally that you know if the, if the guy's driving, then the then the other married guy sits up front, and the women sit in the back. For now, leg room. For, for, for leg room, it's just a, you know it's just kind of a standard. Now, when you get that shaken up, like when Fried is the designated driver, right? Normally, that uh, that completely changes the configuration, and it's supposed to be you sitting in the passenger side, and the can you couple up again? Well, then that's well, where you let him on. <laughs> let him on, I please. Totally, we we sat. I am the, totally making well, you know, that we, up. Yeah, we sat in the back seat so that we could smoke cigars. Cars on the way home and roll the windows down and not bother the girls with the uh, with oh, the smoke. That didn't bother you on the way to there to bother me with the cigar. No, I put it out about halfway. <laughs> I put the cigar out about halfway down to the restaurant. Uh, but all I know is that we we, you know, we got back to their house. And he says, "Well, what do you say you come in for a nightcap?" So he said, "Great, let's go in for a nightcap." Well, no, I said, "You know, it's late. I'm going to get home. I'm going to check on Bart." You were, "Oh, honey, oh, honey, come on." Well, I like, you know, I genuinely like these I people. know. So, Frida left me there with the two of them. She went down to our house to check on Bart. Right. She came back up, I don't know, 15 or 20 minutes later and had a drink. And I said, okay, well, good night. You know, we'll see you guys. Bye-bye. Talk to you tomorrow. And I'm walking down the front steps, and all of a sudden, he grabs my balls. <laughs> That's, uh... I, I don't care what circles you travel in. That's unusual behavior. Never heard of that. I think so. Maybe it's a British thing. I think so. Oh. I think it happens all the time with the royals. All right, honey. Love you. All right. Thanks Hi. for not mentioning my PJs. Oh, yeah. When my wife came back to pick me up, she was wearing a PJs. <laughs> you mean you came up to their house and... You know, you got a swinging really street. Go I'll tell you right now, your street is. They're bad. not, but they're not like sexy PJs. They were like. No, uh, I didn't wear. I didn't wear any Victoria's Secret. They're I'm, like uh, Nike's. Wait, hey, PJs are PJs. You got. You have a swinging neighborhood. They're like uh, <laughs> Nike's sweat stuff. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah, but they they are pajamas. Yes, they are PJs. Yes. <laughs> well, I've seen her. Hell, one time she was. Uh, uh, well, I don't think you need to go into anything else. Why? Well, uh, she she told me that she was proud of the way I handled that. What was she wearing? One time she was riding on the treadmill in our house. They don't have a treadmill. Yeah. And I yeah. and I walked up into uh, into the, the workout area, and I was looking for Frida. And I walked in, and uh, there was a British lady running on the treadmill with uh, her running shorts and uh, her bra. On. But it had gotten hot, and she hadn't worn uh, you know light enough clothes. Okay, my other line's ringing, so like Bart, I have to be going. My the British people Bye. calling. <laughs> and I uh, at that point I. You know, I I just I looked for and I went whoa whoa okay. hey whoa you're wearing that's a bra you're wearing <laughs> was it a bra bra or was it a like a no it was a bra bra really it was a not it was a uh, sports bra no <laughs> it, was, it got hot it was a purple frilly bra oh, one of those purple ones it was a girl bra very warm. was it like a brandy chastain bra wow yeah in your house yeah was anybody was anybody around no. No, uh, she was running. Uh, she was running in the exercise room because they don't have a treadmill. She came down the street to borrow her treadmill. All right.
And I walked up, and I, I heard the thump, 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 thump. I thought it was Frida. I go walking in there, I go, whoa, hey, whoa, whoa, you got, you got on a... Uh, what happened? A bra. When, when, when she saw you. And she stopped the treadmill. Yeah, yeah, right. She stopped the treadmill. <laughs> well, I mean, she had to do. Did she, did you just run out of there? Is yeah, that what you did? That's exactly what I did. <laughs> oh, and I forgot to mention, she grabbed my balls. <laughs> <laughs> well, you have a fun street, that's for sure. <laughs> no, they're good neighbors to have, except the ball grabbing. So. <laughs> yeah, you could do without that. Hello, Don and Mike. Hey, Don and Mike. Yeah, Steve. Um, it's, it's actually a European thing. The ball grabbing. It's a very touchy feely over there. Like two guys who walk down the street to have their arms on each other. Might have been just your trip to Europe, Steve. <laughs> yeah, I've been there like 25 times. Yeah, now I understand why. <laughs> I don't know why. Just that's the way they are. I don't know. I don't know, man. I, I call it faggy. That's what I call it. <laughs> and, uh, keeping in mind, I danced with a guy one time, but I was bombed out of my mind. At any time, did you look at him and say, I love you, Coco? No. <laughs> <laughs> I did not. <laughs> <laughs> William Chatter. <laughs> it's an old actor's trick. I said, an old actor's trick. I said, I love you, Coco. I danced on her. I said, I love you, Coco. She looked me in the eye. I'm here with the balls. Hello, Don and Mike show. Hi, Don and Mike. Hi. Uh, listen, uh, uh, Mike was saying that that could have been a rugby move, and, and it, I I think he's probably pretty much right on the money. I don't know if you saw the, uh, I guess it was last week's uh, Sports Illustrated. I used to uh, DJ, little, uh, sir, sir, I used to DJ for rugby parties when I was in college. Yeah. And I will tell you this, I have never seen more homoerotic behavior <laughs> in my life. Well, I hey, mean, did you see last week's uh, uh, Sports Illustrated? No. There was a, an Australian rugby player suspended for six games, four, <laughs> and I think Don will like, <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> That's got to be illegal. You're yeah. kidding? That's in Sports Illustrated? Yes, it was in the uh, the sign that the apocalypse is coming or something like that. <laughs> All right, I know that column. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, he's, he was suspended. Uh, I don't have it in front of me, but uh, they gave his name. And, I remember uh, vividly that these rugby guys, and these were American rugby guys, would come in bloodied and bruised, and occasionally teams would come over from, uh, you know, from Europe to play in these tournaments, and they'd all come in, you know, all with, like, bleeding noses and stuff, and then a half hour into the party, somebody would be on the table, balls hanging out in the wind. Oh, God. Yeah, Always. You, I mean, you like... Also, you, you, you can drink... Uh, oh, things. Mm -hmm. Oh my Christ. God. Well, if anybody's got that Sports Illustrated from a couple of weeks ago, I'd love you to call and read us the, um, the little... I know what he means when they say Signs of the Apocalypse is around. It's a, a little column where they run oddities, right? And I'd like to hear about the guy who got, uh, obviously, a game suspense. You know, I mean, where... I mean, a game suspension. You know, did a guy do that during a game? Sounds like in the heat of battle. It like is. during the game, that when they're running down the field or something, he managed to get his hand down the. Yeah, because if it wasn't during the game, there wouldn't be any suspension. Hello, Don and Mike. It was after the you know the game party. If it was a game party afterwards that you would you know, <laughs> you put a fist in there. Hello, <laughs> Don and Mike. I was friends with a guy that played soccer in Scotland, and the this guy would walk around grabbing everybody's nutsack. <laughs> And it's called giving somebody a little bit of the how's your father. <laughs> I'm not it's for it. In. It's all coming clear now. I'm not yeah. for it, man. Well, so I think it's an English tradition. All right. Well, it made me feel oogie. <laughs> it would make it me should. feel oogie, too. Like you just grab my balls. See you tomorrow. <laughs> I don't think of myself as homophobic, but I don't like... Men touching. I, I don't like. Uh, I don't like the the guy that puts his arm around you, you know, or, or or the gentle squeeze on the shoulder. I don't like any of that crap. I really. I just don't. I, I'm I'm uncomfortable with it. What about the game you and Rob play? Yeah. Which one's that? The game where Rob works his way over and touches you every day. That I love. During this show. <laughs> That's different. That shouldn't even be brought into this discussion. I love it. No, listen, and I'm not kidding about that. At some point during this show. Rob and I have a picture, too, where we're smiling cheek to cheek. We haven't done that game in probably a month. I know. Um, or even longer. It, you got really creeped out, and then I think you started to enjoy it. And it's springtime, you know. It is. Yeah, there you yeah. go. Because at one point, Rob would walk over like he was going to adjust something on Mike's computer. <laughs> and he gently touch my shoulder. <laughs> or your foot. Yes. <laughs> hey, hello. Don't touch me today. Hello. <laughs> Don and Mike show. Oh, because you have your Fred Flintstone sandals on. Yeah. There's way too much. All of us are just, there's too much. You know, it's 85 degrees in Washington okay. today. There's just too much skin. Hello, Don and Mike. Don, was your ass bleeding? <laughs> no. No, my ass was not bleeding. <laughs> Thank you, Dick. Thank you for your concern, my friend. Sorry, Hello, Don and Mike. Hi, Don and Mike. This is John Mushu City. Yes, hi. How you doing, buddy? I got a scoop on Buzz. 
Oh. Scoop on Buzz Wire. Scoop on Buzz. Troy Aikman announced his retirement. Yeah, I, it, we, I have a wire service, and I knew that before the show had even started, but thank you. Rats! I thought I had you, Buzz. No, no, you can't. You have to get up pretty early in the morning to do that. Thanks, Buzz. All right, thank you. Bye-bye. Yeah, Bye-bye. You will be missed. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye. And I have ruined Buzz's news show today. Yeah, now what am I going to do? That was going to be a half an hour of the tribute to Troy. <laughs> <laughs> we can still do it, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fine. I think I did that on Friday. <laughs> okay, Coach Maragucci. <laughs> Hello, Don and Mike. <laughs> Hello. Hello. You're on the air. Hey, how are you guys? We're doing great, thanks. I wanted to tell you guys that I went to the real Bada Bing the other night. Oh, the Sopranos right. nightclub. Listen, when we get back, we can't start now. All right, we have to break. But when we get back, uh, the gr I think the greatest all year. We mm. must dissect that Sopranos yeah. from that's last night. You know, why couldn't I have sat down with my mom and watched that one <laughs> instead of the porn fest that was the week before? <laughs> that was, I'd say, that's a, one of the funniest I've seen. So there's a real Bada Bing. There's a real Bada Bing. It's called Satin Doll, and underneath on the marquee it says AKA Bada Bing. Oh, beautiful. And what, where is it? New Jersey? Where? Yeah, it's, in, it's up in Hackensack, New Jersey. It's like right, right down the street from where my parents live. We get up there about Friday night. My dad goes, hey, you want to go to Bada Bing? I'm like, <laughs> you know, hell yeah. Every time I watch this at the beginning of The Sopranos, I've got to think that a lot of those places like Pizza Land and uh, the place where Tony and his crew sit out front and have uh, the meat factory yeah, where they have the big pigs out front. There's got to be tons of people that, that drive by there want to get their pictures taken in front of those tours. Tours. They have there tours. Is a I was tour reading, uh, reading an article I forgot really? what magazine uh, on the train and they're they're apparently uh, really getting out of hand too because they're so popular now. That Satriali's meat market is now a set because there was they didn't want to pay off everyone that was on that street to do all the shooting there. So actually if you look in the first episode it's a different meat market, although it looks the same. It's got a different name on it, but that's a set now. But well, if they're, true. if they're doing tours and stuff, maybe Kenny Kramer can be involved. <laughs> yeah. Oh, our future mayor? Yeah. <laughs> Kenny Kramer, who, listen, officially I want to say this. Kenny Kramer, stop calling us. <laughs> okay? <laughs> we know that you're running for mayor of New York again. Oh, he's doing it again? Yes, but you're not coming on the show again. Didn't he run for governor last time, wasn't it? Something like mayor. that. Before. Mayor? Mayor before. Huh? Hello, uh, Don and Mike. Hey, you guys wanted to uh, hear that uh, thing out of SI? Yeah, you got it. Yeah, yeah I got it. Go. It, this week, the sign of the apocalypse is on us. Australia's National Rugby League suspended John uh, Hoppe 8 for 12 games for the ball. That's it. See, it's, <laughs> it's an in-game thing. If it was the post-game party, there wouldn't be any suspension. Yeah, that's called checking somebody's oil, too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> during, during a game. Jesus Christ. <laughs> All right. Thanks. Thank you, my friend. And, you know, let's be honest. If it's in the middle of a rugby scramble, <laughs> we're not going to be doing anything that's really pleasant. I mean, maybe it's the, uh, maybe it is the British thing. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's got to hurt. All I know is that he, he grabbed my balls and he said, see you tomorrow. <laughs> well, he's going through the material, too. It's not like he's, you know, he's going skin on skin. Call 100, yeah, right. 877 <laughs> Let's try to give away the money to the secret be the 100th caller, right now. Number one, Arbitron Lake, the Don and Mike Show. Come over here. What are you doing? I'm changing. But you took off your Captain Hook uniform. Well, I thought I'd put my street clothes on for the drive over to IBM. The uniform's kind of uncomfortable. Hamilton, you're going over there as a representative of Captain Hook Fish and Chips. Part of our image, part of our appeal is that uniform. You know that. You really want me to put this stuff back on? Yes, I do. Show a little pride. Yes, sir. God damn it. Right. The Don and Mike Show. Hey, Charlie Brayhill, I know you're not around, but maybe you're listening upstairs in your office. Any chance you get Nancy on the phone today? <laughs> you're, oh, you're here. Well, would you try to get him on the phone today? Little Masters post-mortem? I'd love to scream at him. <laughs> he is the queerest announcer, especially during golf. Well, especially during the Masters. He, he tweet, he's bad during golf for making it flowery. At the Masters, he takes even that a step further. You know, it's like he's reading out of a Harlequin um, romance <laughs> novel. The majestic pines, Tiger Woods making his walk into history. 
I would like to put my fingers. <laughs> yes, yes, the tiger slam. <laughs> yes, it's been done. He gets wound up, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. <laughs> and, and, you know, with Jim Nance, with Vince Scully, when he used to do golf, you didn't notice it. With Jim Nance, you notice it. You know what I mean? Mm. Vince Scully would like, he would probably not be as flowery as Jim Nance, but he'd be pretty flowery. But he'd do it in such a way where you didn't really hear it happening. With Nance, it's just, it's like a full court press I mean, all the time. You, know, you can say, listen, this is, this is golf course, the Masters, the Augusta, it's got a lot of tradition. It's beautiful. It's the toughest golf course in the world. When you make your way around the 11th hole, you stop and you wonder, is this what heaven is like? <laughs> <laughs> the azaleas in bloom, <laughs> the festive red, <laughs> the traditional red worn by Tiger on the final day. Will this be the day that this man makes history, his dreams come true. God, you know, why don't you just blow him? <laughs> why don't you just go out to the 18th hole and give him oral sex? Good old Tiger. I won $20 off a guy yesterday. Guy decided late in the, the game to bet me. Bet me, uh, first of all, it was David Duvall against Tiger. I said, yeah, I'll take it for $20. He said, no, you got to give me better odds. Mickelson and David Duvall against Tiger. I said, you're on. I knew, you uh -huh. know he's going to, he's I got that thing happening where he's got more focus than anybody else. Those guys are so stupid to bet against Tiger Woods. You don't bet against Tiger. You don't bet, no. especially on the back nine. You don't bet against. How Tiger. could you possibly get bet against bet against him when you're going to bet for David Duvall, who wears those? <laughs> I'm a moron, baseball player sunglasses. I'm a moron, and I'm not going to talk in the press tent after the uh, yeah. Masters is over. I'm going to I'm going to go up and go. Ugh. And you know what? If David Duvall lose the the energy bar or whatever, you know, you know, you're on TV. I know you need your little nutrition, but you know, he sits there and he starts chewing on this chocolate bar or whatever. <laughs> When he's in contention, he does the same thing. All he's the guy's just too uptight. Hole number three, the legendary magnolia, <laughs> the Eisenhower pine. I'm looking forward to the rim job that I'll be getting. Mickelson doesn't have to win the tournament because I've seen his wife. Have you ever seen Phil Mickelson? Right, wife? POA. Oh my God, a major POA. Yeah, and he's kind of a schlubby guy. Yeah, you know what I mean. He's kind of like lumpy a little bit. <laughs> I bet he had to throw his underpants away after that round yesterday. <laughs> he looks like he has to do that every round. He's Hot, got that sweaty. He's not super fat. I mean, he's kind of a thin guy, but he's got that kind of schlubby look to him. You know? <laughs> Hello, uh, Don and Mike show. Oh, uh, yes, Don and Mike. How you doing? Hi, we're doing great. Who's this? Uh, this is Phil. I got the, uh, I happen to know who the poster boy is for uh, paper shredder related accidents. Uh, listen, we're doing a contest here, my friend. Uh, I'm calling 100, sir. Yes. How great. That's for Christ's sake. Well, what, where are you calling from? Fairfax. All right, listen, you've won the little bunny foo-foo bear. <laughs> oh, another bear. <laughs> the Vermont teddy bear. Little bunny foo-foo? Little bunny foo-foo bear. Aww. Isn't that wonderful? You may, maybe you want to grab your balls when you get this bear. <laughs> Order a bear to be delivered for Easter. Call 1-800-829-BEAR or go to vermontteddybear.com. Little British foo-foo bear. All right, are you ready? <laughs> listen, whatever you have to say, hold off. Yes, you're you're going to play for... $500 now with secret sound number two, a common everyday sound. Are you ready? Yes. Should I give a hint already? No. Please. Come on, Rob. No. The next one's a killer. Yeah, but this has only been three days. Only been three days? Please. All right. I'll wait to give you a hint. You want a hint, Mike? I do want a hint. Me too. Okay. You're here at the bathroom. Is that a good hint? This is, yeah. You know what, Rob? The, that is that is fart. that is more of a. Hint. I know it is. No, you hear this sound in the bathroom. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's your clue. It's common everyday sound. Uh, identify it. You win five hundred bucks. Please don't give us your answer until Mike sings like Jim Croce. Oh, <laughs> we wish you. That's for you. Caller, name this sound. There it is. A sound that you hear. In the bathroom. That's a good place. If we do give away the money, it's courtesy of Main Street Title. Why to keep time in a bottle? First thing that I want to do. Yeah. Yeah. Bill and do a Jim Croce. I know. I know it's weakening, isn't it? I'm gonna I'm gonna have all new songs. 
<laughs> next week. For five hundred dollars, give us the title and artist, please. No. Or I'm sorry, give us the pollen. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's the hate. It's the pollen. Yes. No, no, no. I was thinking about you and singing. It with me. Well, the thing is, me and the pollen. My fault. Mm. Oh, okay, get, lay it on us. What's the sound? I say it's um, uh, taking the aspirin, uh, the top of the aspirin bottle off uh, after a night of heavy drinking. Would you please repeat that? Yes, it's uh, popping the child protective uh, aspirin. Whoa! Hey, how about that? I thought he might have it. That's what it sounded oh, like. I, oh, wait, hold on. If that's what it sounded like, why didn't you say it? Because it's when, a great he, clue. when he said it, it just made, you know, I, I thought of the sound and it made sense that that's what it might be. I, I had not, it had not entered my brain until that very moment. Oh, that's a great clue. I wasn't trying to take credit. Rob's clue was buzz. Because actually, <laughs> to be quite honest with you, naturally, it, it was out of him. It was out of him. Congratulations, yes, sir. Good Thank job. You. As a matter of fact, you, that is the sound. Listen to it now. Okay. You know, taking off, putting on a, a cap. Is on. it taking, on, uh, taking it off or putting it on? You know what? I think it's putting it on. Okay. It's, it's just yeah, it dealing like with a childproof lid. <laughs> That's what it is. Way to That's go, crazy. sir. And you, Thank you. you. You called, like, for another reason. Yes, I did. And yes. Like, who cares? You won 500 bucks. That's super. That's great. That's, thank you very much. Robbie, you got that next one ready? I don't. I will have it for you tomorrow. But oh, I think Mike will love it. Oh, I want it now. No, you'll love it today. You'll love the next one. Really? Uh, yeah. Can I, can I give a shout out? Yeah. Uh, Knuckle Buster? Hey, Knuckle Buster. How you doing? All right. Thank, thank you, you, my friend. Listen, enjoy your $500. And uh, Dennis Murphy is the poster boy for uh, uh, huh. uh, paper... <laughs> Shredder-related accidents. All right, got gotcha. you. Still agenda. All right, thank yeah. you. Had his agenda, got it through. <laughs> even with even with winning, he couldn't park his agenda. He won five hundred bucks. That was the sound. Replacing a uh, child-proof cap. Like and I'm going to like the one tomorrow. A bottle of Tylenol. You'll love it. Mm. We came up with it just with you in mind. Do you think I'll have a, sh a shot at guessing it? Guaranteed. Don't you think you'll Don't you think you'll get it on the first listen? Second or third guess, Todd. No, I'm going to bet you get it on the first listen tomorrow. Oh, oh boy, that's exciting. Because you've done so much complaining about this contest. <laughs> <laughs> and the next one is absolutely for you. Well, congratulations to that guy. He did a good job. Uh, Charles Broyhill, I have a couple of questions for you, if you don't mind. As long as you are here, and I know you are, because I just heard you on the in-house monitor system about calling Nancy. Um, hi, how you feel about uh, going under the Inquisition for a moment today? Why did you uh, give flowers to Lisa? To thank her for what she did for us Thursday and Friday. Oh, look at that. That's very nice. Look at that. You know, that was either a spring sound or Charles Broyha is giving off some electromagnetic energy. No, I think it was the sound of, him, sound of him pulling down the, uh, the microphone. So you just gave her flowers because she did a good job? Yeah. Wow. That's amazing, isn't it? That is so unlike you. This is terrific. There's a great energy and a great wit back there. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, why'd you stay in New York over the weekend? I had plans. Wow. With who? But you have no friends. I do now. <clears throat> Come on. Come on, you sneaky bastard. <laughs> you stayed in New York over the weekend? Yeah. I didn't know that. You didn't tell me. You didn't, didn't, didn't tell, tell me. You didn't tell me you were staying overnight. No, I didn't. He told, he told nobody. We didn't find out until we were leaving. And then he said, no, I'm, I'll, I'm staying tonight. No, I, he might have stayed the whole weekend. I don't no, know. I came back on Saturday. Ah. So you just spent Friday nights? Friday night. Had a Friday night in NYC. Yes, I did. A Friday night of fun. Really? Yes, it was. But you have... You have no I have friends. no friends. You have no friends, and I've never known you to actually have fun. <laughs> That's which, right. Which is why this is this is such an enigma. It's fascinating. What did you do? I hung out with a friend. <laughs> what did you do with a friend? Friend stuff. <laughs> <laughs> He's the amazingly secretive man. Did you do the friend stuff inside? Some was inside, some was outside. Some was outside. Did you go out to dinner? I did eat. <laughs> God. So that meant no. I no. I speak royal. I, I do. I mean, I've had to learn it. It's a language that comes very hard to me. So I, uh, I actually, what he just said was he did not go out to eat. No, he did not. Correct. Someone cooked him dinner. No, I, I would disagree. If if we're going to play, what is Charlie actually saying? I think. Or he had room service. He ate separately, or he ate like at a fast food place. But whoever the friend is, you didn't dine with the friend. I did dine with the friend. You did? I did. Did you dine out at a restaurant with the friend? 
Yes. Oh, okay. Uh, He's just being him. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, that's too funny. You actually went out to dinner with someone at a restaurant? I did. That wasn't the poem. <laughs> <laughs> no. You're kidding. It was tough. Where did you go? A restaurant near the station. Red Eye Grill? No, not that near. Pick a bagel? <laughs> no, it was Kennedy's Fried Chicken. All oh, right. <laughs> you know, we want to stop there every time we drive through Harlem. I know, it looks it's delicious. Good. It is good. It's the world's second best KFC. Fantastic. Kennedy's Fried Chicken. <laughs> and um, after dinner, what happened? Um, we left. Was it a guy or a girl? It was a girl. Shocker. It was a girl. <laughs> Did you go back to your hotel? Yes, I did. <laughs> did she go back to your hotel? Uh, we had this hotel together. Oh, very good. I like it. That's more information than he normally gives up. Have we met this girl? No, you haven't. Oh. Mm. Great mystery. Did you pick her up on the request line up at NEW? Sidewalk. Is this person... Uh, back from lunch the wow. other day. Is Solid this day. individual a uh, New York area person? Someone who lives up there? She doesn't live up there. Uh, did you pay for her company? <laughs> <laughs> well, I paid for dinner, so... <laughs> did she get flowers? Oh, is, it, is it what's her name? No, it's not. Did she get flowers afterwards for a job well done? <laughs> <laughs> she sure did. <laughs> she sure did. Sure did. All right. Sure did. All right. Is that all the information you're going to give us? You've gotten quite a bit. We have. Yeah, yeah. we've gotten more than we and, normally get. Nothing. An amazing amount. Did she spend the night at the hotel? Well, she. You had the hotel room together. Yes. Together. Wow. So you actually you slept with her, in the same room. Yes. In the same bed. Yes. <laughs> He's funny. <laughs> He's funny. You only give, only speak when spoken to. <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> that to me is funny. In the nice New York City night. I know he gets laid all the time. It's enough. Mm -hmm. right. But I picture when Charlie gets laid. That he gets laid, and as soon as he's done, you know, getting his nut, it's like, <laughs> good night, and <laughs> leave me go. Can you picture what it's like the next morning with Charles Broyhill? I don't like to think those things. <laughs> <laughs> That'll make me wake up with, with a cold sweat. <laughs> what are you, okay, give, on Saturday morning, the, run me through the routine when you wake up, and she's there with you. Turn the TV on. Turn the TV on. <laughs> right. If it, if it wasn't on a timer from the night before. Scratch bean bag vigorously. Right. <laughs> now, would you do, did you take her again in the morning? <laughs> to where? <laughs> to uh, to penis land. Shangri La. <laughs> did you? Uh, who said I did the night before? Uh huh. Oh come on. <laughs> you certainly didn't yet. I haven't said anything. You aren't. You're not going to kiss and tell. No. So you went out to dinner with a girl, she came back, she shared your bed, and you didn't bang her? That's correct. I did not bang her. Oh, is this a... You, you made love to her. Is this, I know, because you don't like using words like that, like bang and I prefer F. the expression, knock the bottom out. <laughs> Please. Is this a serious relationship? No, it's relatively new. Oh, new. New, great. Exciting and new. Well, when do we get to meet her? Mm. Never? You know, we're going back up to New York next week. I know you are. And so are you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> How about it? How we're, about it? We're thinking about doing, a, if it's a nice evening, doing a little Little Italy action okay. on Thursday night. Mm. How about it? Great. Bring her along. If she's there, I will. Okay, great. Okay. Fantastic. And Buzz, you bring your girlfriend, too. I will. All right. And Don and I, of course, will date each other. <laughs> what, is she a stew or something? Um, no, she's not. Does she work in the industry, in our industry? Related? Related. Does she uh, maintain the Broyhill standards? I think so. Would we be pleased? <laughs> I don't care. I know you don't care, but you know why I ask that. Don't you a piece of ass? I don't ask that I for, for so. you, you know what I, I ask yeah, that I know. for our own I know. gratification. I just Real or fake? Real. Real. Magnificent? Who? Magnificent. Are they magnificent? <laughs> you said magnificent. I'm sorry. <laughs> Is it Rob's sister-in-law? Damn it. <laughs> F you, Rob. <laughs> Michelle didn't want this to get out. Fantastic. <laughs> All right, you sly bastard. Thank you. You're welcome. Congratulations. Well, something to look forward to on Thursday night. Mm -hmm. yeah. Scrutinizing another one of Charlie's many women. <laughs> right. And, you know, he probably would have gotten away with it mm -hmm. because we thought, with the weather being bad, that he was going to be taking the train with you? Mm -hmm. I thought Buzz was going to take the train back with me. And it wasn't until we were leaving the station when Richard, the big mouth, our driver, <laughs> right? said, 
Hey, Charlie. And right in front of all of us, he says, that hotel you're staying at tonight? You go down the street one block. It's right on 58th. You can't miss it. That hotel you're staying at tonight. <laughs> right away, we all perked up. <laughs> and thanks to Richard again for, you know, his wonderful hospitality. Yeah, no, he's great. He's a fantastic guy. Nice yeah. guy. So listen, uh, Sopranos. All right. <laughs> Watch the Sopranos. Like a one hour of television worth waiting for every week. And last night was a really good one. First off, I love the fact that Polly Walnuts is becoming so much more in the show. Yeah, Polly Walnuts, who just makes me laugh as much as Tony makes me laugh. When he was sniffing Christopher's girlfriend's uh, underpants. I really thought Christopher was going to get up and, uh, yeah. and go confront him. I about bust a nut when that happened. I, I really did. I love the fact that Carm went to see Dr. Melfi mm -hmm. by herself. That was a great dynamic. And I love even more that Carm saw the other psychiatrist who told her point blank to leave Tony. That was hysterically funny. But the highlight of the show was after Junior's throwing up with his chemo, <laughs> when he says to Tony, hey, you know what I'd like? I'd like you to get a girl over here to tongue my balls. <laughs> and Tony says, seriously... Uh, if you want that, it's a phone call away. Well, he's saying it like sarcastic. Yeah. You know, say, yeah, yeah, I believe that. And then. But he says, if you want it, I will have to look for you, Uncle June. The phone <laughs> call away. I love the part where they confront uh, Uncle June's doctor on the golf course. Uh, Dr. John oh, Kennedy. Yeah. And, and Furio said, that's the stupid F in the game. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez. I mean, last night was just yeah. pure gold. Every moment, every single moment of The Sopranos was fantastic. What about Furio hitting the doctor in the head saying, there is a bee on your hat. <laughs> <laughs> and just knocking his hat yeah. in the water. He's like the real enforcer, you know. <laughs> and then knocking his little tape recorder out of his he goes, dictaphone. Oh, but he goes, uh, Sarah, make an appointment for Mr. Soprano at 2. Boom! Remem right? Remember it. Right into the water. Remember it. Yeah. Okay? Don't, don't talk in your little recorder. Remember it. <laughs> the funny thing is, things with Tony walking around with his robe on. Tony in his bathroom. <laughs> I love that. You know, when it, I realize when I really love The Sopranos is when I'm laughing a little bit during it. You know, when when they have those funny moments because they're all such strong characters, you can laugh actually through the entire thing. I love the fact that Polly Walnuts is busting Christopher all the time. It's hysterical. The only time that I felt oogie last night was, I was positive. That Tony was going to kill that dog. Right. Yeah. Right. I was positive. And, I, and I, I really, I turned to Fred and I said, God, I hope he doesn't kill the dog. But the bass, you know, when they brought the, the, the singing <laughs> bass into, into the strip joint and he had the flashback. Oh, oh it's and, hysterical. You heard Paulie Walnuts is going to buy another one and bring yeah. another one. He's going to bring another one in there. <laughs> I had the same thought about you as the dog. And what does it say about us? We all get, like, we're doubling over when they kill each other. Right. And, right. But, oh, we don't want the dog to get hurt. I think everybody reacted that way because, I mean, it was just, to, you, you, you saw it and you knew it probably wouldn't happen. But, yeah, uh, right. yeah Tony should play on the kill the dog. It could have, though. Great episode. Really one of the best. I think one of the best I've ever yeah, seen. It really was. good. Great. He goes to the baseball bat. I'm paying you this money driving a Cadillac? <laughs> boom! <laughs> boom! Don't talk to my wife. Boom! Boom! You know, it's so funny because I was saying to Don in the office, well, you know, God, it's amazing. He has no conscience. You know, he whacked the guy and then up. He was a rat. <laughs> he was. He's a rat, of course. Don't forget, that part about the story about Big Pussy is true. Yeah, Big Pussy did wear a wire. Yeah, he, he ran him out. And he was a rat. He was going to send him all up the river. And he was a rat. <laughs> Christopher. <laughs> Christopher just getting chopped by Polly Walnut. And the shoes. The wrong size. Polly takes the shoes. Right. Because he thinks that they'll fit his uh, girlfriend, whoever that girl is he's shacking up with. And now we all know it's going to be wiener jokes for Christopher, you know, for the rest of his life. <laughs> yeah. uh, they uh, did the strip search. All right. <laughs> oh, I love that. <laughs> Great show. That show does not disappoint. It, it surely doesn't. I mean, it has varying degrees, but last night was really, uh, on a scale of 10, I give it a 10. I really do. Hello, Don and Mike. Don, you missed a very crucial point. What? Holly Walnuts bought the Billy Bass and gave it to Christopher and said, Chris, you bring it to the club because you saw Tony hit the big bouncer guy over the head with it. Uh, you know, is that true? Did we miss that? I missed that. If that, oh. yeah, he, if that's the case, that's even better than he's setting he's setting Christopher up to get Tony pissed at him. <laughs> <laughs> and that poor guy, the big bouncer, is the whipping boy. Every single week, he gets his ass kicked. But Tony hit him over the head with the thing, right? And he still got the like the eye patch from where Ralphie hit him with the chicken <laughs> in the head. Oh. And I got a question: Do you all think that's a fake stomach on Bobby 
box. Yes. Because it's getting bigger yeah, I every think that's week. Oh, you think a guy who's like junior, junior nerd? Nerd? You I, I think that a guy that's that big, even, you know, it's just, it looks abnormal the way it juts out. Like, yeah, I, I think it might be. Hey. Look at those two. Before and way before. <laughs> Hello, Don and Mike show. Hey, guys, just two quick comments on the show last night. They would never let Tony kill the dog, even though my wife and I are both kind of cringe at the thought, because they want you to like Tony, even though he's a scumbag and a mafia guy. That's a they tough want you line. To like him. That is a really tough line to walk, too, because, you know, they really walk up to that edge when you have Tony, like, uh, you know, walking up to the widow's car and, and blasting out the windows. But then they bring it in where, you know, she does have the Cadillac and she's crying, I don't have any money, when she really does have money. So, you know, here I am defending Tony. He, he and, right. and listen, I, I got the, uh, the uh, feeling, I'm of the opinion, if she was lying to Carm, she was going to come about the dog because Tony said, the dog looks fine to me. And she said, oh, it comes and it goes. Uh -huh. Yeah, right, exactly. Yeah, please, what does it come and go on a dog? Yeah. I like what Carm said, how many widows do you have on your payroll? <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty funny. Hello. Hello, Don and Mike show. Don and Mike. You yeah. know, that seems like for anybody that reads about the mafia and stuff like that, that's the only thing that's really not true. That doesn't happen. Like, if they whack a guy, if they, if they whack the guy because for being a rat, you know, his family, c'est la vie. I don't think they take care of the family. I think the family has to kind of fend for themselves after that's all, or like maybe get out of town. Hello? Yeah, Don. Yeah. You know what I thought was funny, too, is when uh, Junior tried making the milkshake. He ah. put the uh, ice cream in there, and he put the <laughs> yeah. yeah. I thought there was Dennis Murphy trying to make a milkshake there. Cause How many highlights? Uh, I mean, honest to God. Well, there was a lot through. last night. Absolutely. Hello, Don and Mike. Yeah, Junior had the two best lines. You gave the first one. And the second one, when he had to explain to his stupid bodyguard, don't you get it? You think Tony wants me to see a good doctor? Uh, he's a sea hair away from New Jersey. Yeah, I'm that sea hair. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Oh, you know, great. Junior Soprano, when you watch that show, he has he gets some of the best lines in that whole show. Absolutely. <laughs> and a liberal use of the C word last night also. Yeah, one yeah, yeah. Call somebody your C wife or something like that. Well, Junior, Junior I think, has the, the worst language on the show. Junior really, you know, he always throws in that stuff. You know, hey, Don and Mike. <laughs> or Jude Arnold could fill a book. Hello, Don and Mike. Yeah, hey, Don and Mike. I wanted to refute a point that uh, a guy had made just a moment ago. Um, Paulie Walnuts wasn't in the club uh, when Tony beat up the uh, the whipping boy. My, my wife had made the same comment, too. Right. And but I, I don't think that's where they were. Uh, I don't think that's where they were going with it. I, no, I don't think Paulie's conniving that. I think he just, you know, he thought it would be great. To accidental. Get yeah. the fish. Hey, can I ask one other thing? Sure. Is uh, is Rob A's last name really Spiewak? Yes. Uh, did anybody? Uh, you guys? No, I guess you were in town. Did anybody catch the uh, the national uh, college hockey championship over the weekend? I saw highlights of it. I hope not. One, one, of, the, one of the stars of uh, Boston College who won, his last name was Spiewak. That's my uncle. <laughs> Rob's uncle, please. It's impossible anybody with the name Spiewak is at, at, at all athletic. <laughs> that's, that's impossible. That's in the DNA. Hi, that day I scored a goal. Hello, Don and Mike show. Yeah, Don and Mike. Yeah. Yeah, last year, before they bumped Richie off, when he first came on last year, Richie Aprile. Yeah. That was uh, Christopher's girlfriend was his niece. And Paulie Walnuts told him that he took care of their family while he was in prison. So I'm sure he was banging the daughter while Richie was in prison before Christopher even got her. So you're saying that Paulie Walnuts was banging the girl who's going to marry Christopher? Yeah, because remember last year he says, she ain't yours till you say I do. Well, maybe that's why he was smelling her panties. Yeah, I think he smelled them panties before. You know what's great about this show is you can overanalyze it and you don't lose anything. I mean, you no. really, yeah. you really think that there are, they have little tricky subplots like that. Hello, Don and Mike. Hey, Don and Mike, how's it going, guys? Hi. Hey, listen, uh, I don't know if you guys caught the previous or next week's episode. I know something jumping ahead, but uh, last week you were talking about Richie. You know how he's been acting crazy. Uh, he actually, he's Richie? Pretty off. Yeah, he's Ralphie. The, uh, Ralphie. 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 Sorry about that. I, I think he's going to get it next week's episode. Uh, how much you want to bet? Uh, I bet. I bet an easy twenty on that. Because uh, he was, he act like he said after all I've done for you guys, I think the he usually gets like unmade or something. What color? What color is your hair? <laughs> I got blonde hair. Uh, how about instead of the twenty dollars? How about if they don't whack uh, Ralphie in next week's episode, you come down and you have to uh, have your hair dyed jet black, like a soprano. I'll accept that. 
You'll accept that. I'll, huh. say I'll accept that. All right, good. Hold on a second. We'll get the information from you. Hold on. Okay. Because there's no way they're killing Ralphie off. I mean, anyway. Especially, like, five episodes yeah, in. Not yet. Hello, Don and Mike. You know, I think that uh, Please. If, if the guy really is blonde, that'll be a funny look. Hello, Don and Mike show. <laughs> yeah, I got a comment about Sopranos last night. Yeah, go ahead. Um, when Tony... Right, great comment. Thank you. Hello, Don and Mike show. Hey, Don and Mike, how's it going? You know, it's hard, folks. We're doing a show moving at the speed of light. Please, yeah, mm -hmm. guys. Keep, keep up with us. We're doing 55 in the left-hand lane here. Hey, guys. Yeah. i just like to say... Your room, your Cadillac, your dog, come. Come, your dog. <laughs> All right. Thank you, my friend. Hello, Dan and Mike. This is Furio Junta from The Sopranos. I never listen to you. Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> it's a stupid effing game. Goodbye. <laughs> Love that. You had to be on your hat. <laughs> Whack. <laughs> All right. That's The Sopranos update. Oh, got a break. When we come back. Oh, we're going to get into this whole uh, China thing. All right. The, the bastards. we still got our plane. I know. It's an international controversy. We don't want a controversy. They, they've still got our peoples. We'll be right back. Number one, Arbitron Link, the Don and Mike Show. Okay. Uh, hi, this is Dorm Radio, D-O-R-M, broadcasting live from the basement of the science building. Great. Discussing places and wet things. Don Geronimo and Mike O'Mara. Well, we're going to have one of our dirty contests on Thursday. We'll let you uh, know about it tomorrow. Because uh, Thursday we have a good prize to give away. A trip for two to Los Angeles. All right. For the American Comedy Awards. Tickets to the uh, same thing of the show and the after party. Comedy's Biggest Night comes to Comedy Central. Wednesday, April 25. At 8 p.m. Good. We'll give that away on Thursday. Hello, Don and Mike show. Don and Mike. Hi. Hey, do you remember the first time you saw color TV and thought about how great it was over black and white? That's actually one of my most vivid memories of childhood is uh, my first time I saw color. It was uh, the Mike Douglas show and a uh, drum set that was... Uh, was red, one of those red sparkly drum sets. It's the first thing I ever saw on color TV. I never yeah. forgot it. I, was I remember really? seeing Batman at Me too. Super's house. Me too. And my son of a bitch father refused to buy color TV. So I had to go to the girl next door. Her name was Holly Byer. Right. I had to go to her house to watch Batman on color because was she the one who you mowed the lawn for and later oh no 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 that was <laughs> Batman when Batman was on I was like uh, eight well I was just saying I know you didn't bet her then I'm just saying wasn't it down the road that was some dentist uh, that was the orthodontist's uh, daughter down the street <laughs> I love your stories of of your real young formative things mm -hmm. you know going I gotta be careful with that now because I'm you're I'm, in the neighborhood I'm just Pat you know Bart has just passed. Right. The age when a lot of that stuff happened to me. Yeah, exactly. But, uh, right. yeah. So we'll knock that off. But, I just brought it up. But, oh, hold on, about color TV. This was a pisser, man. Everybody had color TV except us. And I loved Batman. I loved that show. You know, I still love Batman today. So I had to go to Holly Byers' house to watch Batman. And my father, I told you he did this. <laughs> One day he came home and he said, Great news, we have color TV. I was like, Oh, my God, you're the greatest. Well, he went to the hardware store, right, where for 69 cents, they sold you a piece of uh, a, a piece of plastic. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was sold as an alternative to color TV. Yes. Right. And on this piece... I remember it. On this piece of plastic, it was like Neapolitan ice cream. Mm -hmm. One third was green, one third was blue, right. one third was red. The stripes went up and down. And you taped it. To your television set. Uh -huh. And that was what my dad tried to pass as color TV. Just as good. And I was <laughs> I was so pissed. Yeah. I cannot believe it. He did not buy a color TV until after man walked on the moon. Right. Until after the New York Jets won the Super Bowl. Right. I remember watching both of those historic events. Well, you're not alone in that. In black and white. The New York Jets, because the New York Jets Super Bowl, I watched at a neighbor's house because we didn't have it yet either. We were actually the last. 
<laughs> one of the last bit what's that say about us? We were one of the last families, I think one of the last families to get color, color TV. Maybe middle of the pack. I, I don't ever I don't have a memory of a lot of my friends having one family on the street had it and we watched the Super Bowl, which was televised in color. Yeah. Uh the the Jets win in the in the Super Bowl and I remember, you know, watching and just being absolutely mm -hmm. amazed. But the first memory of my own was that drum set on the Mike Douglas show, which I just I came in, my jaw hit the floor and we had a tiny, tiny little uh, TV set. I remember the, the brand name, too. It was a Toshiba. Hey, I'll give you mm -hmm. one. I don't know what time those were. When I, the first time I saw the Brady Bunch, right. it was black and white. Mm -hmm. What year was the Brady Bunch? That was like 1970, right? Early 70s. Yeah. 71? When the Brady Bunch first came on. I think it was 68 to 74. And I think it was four or five seasons, maybe 69 to 74. Yeah, well, I, I don't know. It wasn't until way into 1970 that he finally bit the bullet and went out and bought one. And even then... When we had a color TV, mm -hmm. we could only watch it on special occasions. And get this, we could only watch educational programming on our color TV. That's tough. It wow. sucked. Couldn't watch cartoons? No. Oh, nothing, Saturday morning cartoons? Nothing's educational about cartoons. Was he afraid it was going to wear out or what? Yes. It's like he finally bought a color TV. Mm -hmm. And now that he bought it, we were only going to watch it on special occasions. Oh, my God. So, like, every time there was uh, an Apollo something or other. But the right? Apollo was in black and white. Well, whatever came after That's Apollo. the I mean, you'd see, like, no, you'd see the the guys uh, the, were, would be in color. But no, the but actual, Walter Cronkite was in the, color. The, the Walter Cronkite was Walter in color. Walter Cronkite was in right. color. I think the pictures that came back from the moon landings were, uh, at least the early ones, were black and white. No, but, pictures. like, when the rockets took off and stuff, yep. that was in color from Cape Canaveral. Mm -hmm. so, so we would be able to watch important stuff like that right. in color right <laughs> but you couldn't I, watch the mike douglas show i could watch it in black and white <laughs> <laughs> and it took years and years for my dad to finally come around part of it was he really thought it was a fad he thought that color tv was a fad would be uh you know on and gone <laughs> what a dope <laughs> <laughs> what a freaking idiot <laughs> maybe that's why i'm so obsessed with television now and why be i think that's everything that you uh you know that you, if you're pushed to do something you normally will shy away from it if you're deprived of something you will gravitate yeah. towards and i think that's uh, that's kind of standard practice okay but my proudest accomplishment is i have tv on a stick in my bathroom <laughs> in my bathroom at home i have uh, like a 13-inch TV on a stick up in the corner, and when I'm taking a dump, I can watch Regis Philbin. In color. In, in living color. In color, while I'm taking a dump. It's actually on the stick? Yes, on a stick. That's, you know, you know you're into TV if you've got one in your own bathroom. Because, I mean, the ones that are in uh, hotel, fancy hotel bathrooms are very, very rare, very cool. But to have it in your own house, you gotta, oh. you got to really not want to miss anything. <laughs> well, and it's a luxury that I wanted to give myself. And I, I blame my father for You know what I saw in a, a magazine? They have now a jacuzzi tub that you can install in your home, in your bathroom, that has a television built into the tub. That's nice. Now, speaking of someone Christ, who, that's nice. who one time rolled the television out to, like, the corner and just soaked in a tub and watched television and thought that that was living, it just looked really cool. Sure. It's, like, built right into the side of the tub. Well, a long time ago, we had one of those uh, cheapy hot tubs that was out on our, out on our deck, mm -hmm. and... When the weather was bad, like when it was snowing, right? I actually made free to bring a TV outside, put it on the edge, so I could watch a football game. Safe. I, yeah, <laughs> yeah, safe. <laughs> so I could watch a football game while I was technically sitting in the hot tub. Because <laughs> to me, that, that was like being king of the world. Yeah, there's something about bathing and watching television together. Yeah. There's something about being able to watch television while you're doing something that you couldn't watch TV before. You know, like having a television in an automobile is a huge thing. But I blame my father totally, because every other kid had color TV. And I loved TV. And I loved Batman. That son of a bitch. So, Don, the reason I brought it up... Yes. ...was that that's the way I feel today. Why? Because I'm listening to Don and Mike on FM again. Are you up in Vermont? I am in Burlington, Vermont. Oh, oh wonderful. Seven the zone. Cool. Right, yeah, they... First time in many years... 
It's hearing you well again. Right. They finally, uh, you know, got off the schneid, put us on FM up there. Well, beautiful. Thank you. And what's that? What is that? 96.7? 96.7 The Zone. Gotcha. Thank you, my friend. Okay. And as a matter of fact, I was talking with uh, Charles Broyhill. Uh, the first show he ever saw in color? Mm -hmm. The West Wing. <laughs> <laughs> wow. He just saw it. It was a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, he loved it. He loved it. Of course, it was in a store window. <laughs> Hello. Hello, Don and Mike show. Hey, how you doing? Hi, we're doing great. Yeah, first time I saw Color TV was back 65, I guess. The uh, That's that's early. Uh, you show off. Uh, hey, listen, man, it was uh, Green Acres. Show off. 65. Green Acres and then Batman. But I don't know when we got one, but I want to say something to Mike here was the FBI in color. You remember yeah. that? Yeah, I do. I remember that. Well, you yeah. know, at, the, at the beginning of Batman, it used to say, Batman, and then below, yep. it would say, mm -hmm. in color. The early shows that I watched in color, remember the Wild Wild West, Hogan's Heroes? Those were, you know, especially the Wild Wild West, because they did so much in color. It was, uh, And wasn't the Wild Wild West a, a show that was black and white and then made the move to yes. color? That was one of those shows that made the transition. Yes, it was. I wouldn't know, Mike. And, I, you know, I remember the shows that, that were late to the to the party being in color that would, you know, just hang on. Because television shows, it was expensive mm -hmm. to do it in color, and they, they, they a lot of them, like, would All hang right. on. Here's another one. Is, Robbie, give me a timeline on this. When I first saw the Partridge family, we didn't have a color TV yet. That had to be 1970, I think. Yeah. God damn! I didn't have one in, I don't think I had one in 70 either. Yeah. It was right at, was it on? 69 was the, uh... Moon landing, August of was 69. The, the, the jet swim, was that technically in 1970? It was uh, the 69, 69 season. season. So, that so it would January have been the 1970 uh, Super Bowl. And I think shortly after that, because my dad digged watching the Super Bowl in color, it's like the sports, we, we got one. But if you got one in 1970, you were not... I don't think you're deprived. Or if you're deprived, I was deprived. We didn't have one in 19... What I'm saying is... When did you get yours? You got yours in 1977. <laughs> no, um, it was... I'm trying to think. Hey, Rob, give me that book with the TV shows. Do you remember you. seeing any of these shows? Because there's like the 1970 season right I'll there. I'll tell you right here, 1970. Uh, Mod Squad, no. Courtship of Eddie's Father, no. Brady Bunch, Nanny and the Professor, no. Um, great year. All right, here you go. It was, in fact... 1971. Mm -hmm. That was a great year. Because I remember one of the first shows that I ever saw in color, and I don't see it listed before. Rob, you were born in 1971? Yes, I was. Congratulations, my God. <laughs> it was the Glen Campbell Good Time Hour. Yeah. Hi, I'm Glen Campbell. Right. That's one of the first shows I remember seeing in color. And so that was 1971 that we got. Was that educational? A color TV. <laughs> no, that was when my brother and I would sneak around. My mom and dad would leave the house. Right, right. And we would be so bold as to have the balls to go down and watch Glenn Campbell. Did you ever stay up late and try to sneak a peek at uh, Playboy After Dark? I saw it in black and white. I think it was only in black and white. Yeah, yeah I think yeah, so. That I had seen, yeah. That was great. They'd go up in an elevator and open it up, and I, I'd be waiting to see naked ladies. That There'd was educational. No. <laughs> you know, I'm realizing now, you know, I am amazed that I, I... You know what? F my parents, Glenn Campbell, Good Time Hour was on in 1970. Well, that's yeah. 70, then. That's that's earlier than... No, but I remember seeing it on Tuesday night. <laughs> and so you probably got your color TV. It probably... Because your obsession with television maybe happened long, long before that. Mm -hmm. I think you maybe felt deprived, but in fact, you were probably middle of the pack when you got... When you got your television, I, think I don't so. want to refute a childhood memory here, but it sounds to me like you're doing you know okay. What? Hold on. If you had said 1973, 74, you'd be... You know what? Maybe you're right. Maybe it was 1969. Because I do see... The, the Super Bowl is a good barometer of that. I do see um, Ghost and Mrs. Muir, mm -hmm. Glenn Campbell, Good Time Hour. Yeehaw. But you remember the Super Bowl wasn't... Was not in color. And we, we had to go to a neighbor's house to watch. As did we. In color. As did we. I think a lot of people jumped on, in 1970, early 1970, right after that Super Bowl, a lot of people jumped on the bandwagon. Hello, Don and Mike show. Hi, I got my color TV much later than you. When? Uh, it was when Beretta was on. Oh, my God. What is that? That's like 76? Probably like 75 or 76. Wow. Listen, I just want to say that, you know, the, 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 they say the mistakes that the parents made with the children. <laughs> that, that the next generation, you make sure that you don't make those mistakes. Right. I agree. And I'm telling you, that's why from the time he was a baby, 
Bart has had a color TV in, in his crib. Right. He had <laughs> he had a little itsy bitsy Sony Watchman in his crib. In his crib. In his crib. How how old was he when he had a real TV like in his room? Maybe ten. Oh, okay. And right now, just want to make sure that I'm not late to the party. <laughs> right now. <laughs> he's got now I've had it for like eighteen years. Right. But he's got a thirty five inch Mitsubishi. <laughs> well that's a, he got that with that negotiation that he when he fixed your T V system. Isn't that what yeah, happened? That's right. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. He did the whole thing where he wired your your uh no, no, surround no. sound and, and because he knew his way around all the equipment. I gave him the old surround sound equipment and then he said, As long as I've got this, can I have the T V that we've got down in the basement? Ah, okay. And I said, Sure. But he did that as a, you got he got that as a reward for fixing your T V setup. Yes, mm -hmm. right, because I'm so stupid. <laughs> Hello, Don and Mike. Yeah, Don and Mike. The first time I saw color T V was the Orange Bowl. Back in the mid '60s. Yeah, because right. before that they called it the Gray Bowl. <laughs> and uh, yeah, big time. And uh, I didn't get a color TV until I moved out of the house back in about I guess '73 or '74, and I still have that TV and it still works great. Mm. But what I used to do. You got a, a television that's uh, from 1974. 73 or 74. Well, what, I still have that color TV, and the picture is better than my 35-inch picture. What brand? What brand is it? Zenith. A Zenith, wow. Yeah, right. The thing is, what be, before my parents decided to buy a TV, a color TV, I used a prism. Oh, is that? That's similar probably to what to my dad put on there. Yeah, it makes rainbows. Yeah, oh, it makes rainbows, and it made the TV look like it was in color. Yeah, but it didn't really. And I, no. I was—I remember that day distinctly. I was so pissed at my dad. He says, "We have color TV." They marketed that—that that thing that would turn your TV into a color television, and it's right in there with that—that—that that, that product that turns your house into an antenna. <laughs> oh, that thing you bought? Yeah. Where you plug it into a socket and it makes your whole house an antenna. It's just BS. Hello, Don and Mike. Hey, Don and Mike. A little while ago, you were speaking about a rugby player who was uh, got suspended, and I just want to let you know that. All the pertinent information, including the guy reading word for word from Sports Illustrated, was dumped by uh, Big Gun McBeanbag back there, whoever's dumping now, it. Now, why would they dump that? The guy's reading an article out of Sports Illustrated. It was not of a sexual nature. The, the rugby... Well, think, the rugby... Thing got out was the guy saying uh, something about, we call that uh, checking the oil. And that's the only thing that was heard. The rugby player... Who, while they were scrambling for the ball. Now, now, what's wrong with that? I mean, would, I, would Charlie know? Would Charlie know? Why would they was, delete was, that out? Uh, so we always like to get a little you know, we're reading something out of Sports Illustrated, and they're going to delete that out. Jesus effing Christ. That's the same reason they don't let us uh, read the penthouse letters. <laughs> <laughs> you know, just because you're reading something doesn't mean it's okay. Believe me, I read the Herod experiment. Hello, Don and Mike show. <laughs> hey, guys, Scooter from Mobile. Scooter! Hi, Yay! Scooter. <laughs> I haven't talked to you guys in so long. Yes, and you can't talk to us until Rob gets his present. You know, you don't realize my dad's mom has been so ill. Hey, Scooter, the the, uh, the Jets won the Super Bowl technically in 1970, right? No, 69. Well, I mean, but it was the 69 season. It was but... the 68 season. Oh. Oh, yeah. gotcha. All right. I wanted to ask you, Don. Sorry, Scooter. The Heidi Bowl was the Heidi Bowl. The Heidi Bowl, yeah, where they uh, cut the uh, right. they cut it short to watch Heidi. Right. Did you ever see All in the Family in black and white? Because that premiered January of 71. That would be a good barometer. January 12, 1971. Wait, wait, you know, you know All in the Family, too? I know any trivia you can ask me. Oh, my God. Wow. It's not just sports. What is the date that the TV show Batman premiered? Uh, April 12, 1966. How many nights a week was Batman originally on? I never watched Batman. Boy, but this is if you know... The only thing I like to get the book. Hold on. This is great. If you know TV trivia, Scooter, this is a totally different area for yeah. you. Yeah. Well, I know that Batman used to be on... I know what is. Used to be on two uh, two nights a week. My birthday is March eighth, nineteen seventy one. That's amazing. Do you know Don's birthday? No, I don't. How about Mike's? April twenty sixth, nineteen sixty two. No, mm. no. All right, Rob, you got your book out. Yes, yeah, Scooter. What day did Happy Days premiere? Happy Days premiered January fifteenth, nineteen seventy four. That's right. <laughs> wow. Wow. Right, wow! Give me the book for a Let me let me hear it. Too much fun. The whole you know, game. You're like our own Rain Man. All right, too hold much on. Fun. When did? Lost in Space premiere. This is a gift. September 12, 1965. 
September 15th, 1965. Oh, my God. Good. All right, hold on. I'm going to give you, um... <laughs> it's amazing. Hold on. Scooter, do you do movie premieres as well or just television shows? He doesn't do. He says he, he does not. Sports and TV shows. He doesn't get out much. That's right. Sports and TV shows. Okay, how about... Do you know, like, who won the Emmy and stuff oh, like that? Hold on. The Mary Tyler Moore Show. When did that debut? 1971? No, it did not. Mm. September September 19th, 1970. Mary Tyler Moore. Mary Tyler Moore. Do you know, like, who won Emmys and stuff like that? Not too much. Not too much, right. What's your area of uh, of TV trivia? What, what, what do you specialize in? Dates? I know mostly about baseball. Mostly about baseball. Do you remember the first baseball game you ever saw? Do I remember? Yeah. First core game I ever saw in baseball, I had to say it, Mike, but it was your Red Fox in the 67 World Series. Oh, wow. Against the St. Louis Cardinals. And the Cardinals beat them, too. Bob Gibson. Yep. All right. When did the TV show... Let me find one more and see if you can get it. When did Mork and Mindy debut? I never watched Mork and Mindy. Well, what, I guess. Kind of, what kind of a rain man are you? Yeah, but he nailed that happy day. I didn't, I didn't know happy days, and I knew the Brady Bunch was September 26, 1969. All right, what about, uh... When did the Partridge family debut? 1970. That's right. Do you have a date? Just a guess, April 28th. <laughs> yeah, he's right. Wow. <laughs> Is he right? Is yeah. he right? What about Gilligan's Island? September the 15th, 1965. No. September 26, 1964. Uh, mm -hmm. A little off on that one. All right. Thank you for the call there, uh, Rain Man. I mean, um, Scooter. Thanks, Scooter. I'm going to from Alabama besides me, though, man. What about Chico and the Man? Chico and the Man from the 26, 1972. September 13th, 1974. Uh, I'm sorry. you got to work on that wow. Savant stuff there, Scooter. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Still waiting on a present. How many, how many toothpicks? Hey, didn't you think he was going to be on a roll? Scooter always disappoints a little bit that way. Yeah. I thought when he nailed the He's first the sort of savant. <laughs> when he had happy days, I right. was positive that he was like going to open up a whole new realm of Rain Man. We all got a little like, ooh. Yeah. Exciting, wasn't it? Hello, Don and Mike show. <laughs> hey, Don and Mike, how you doing? Hi, we're great, thanks. Hey, uh, was The Wizard of Oz the first color movie to come about? Isn't that, wasn't that that big thing? No. Rob might know that. No, I don't think so. I don't know. Buzz might know. Buzz was, uh... <laughs> How old were you? That Were you, like, 20 when that movie came out, Buzz? Yeah, that's about right. Yeah. I think the first... One of the first color movies was a hand-tinted movie. It was 1933's Mystery of the Wax Museum. <laughs> Hello. Don and Mike's It was right around there. <laughs> Thank you, Scooter. Hello. 1934. <laughs> Hello, Don and Mike. Yeah, guys. Yeah. First thing I want to tell you is thank you for helping me rediscover radio during the day. Thank you. And second, I'd like to know, if you're such a TV fan, the TV on a stick, cable or satellite dish? Oh, in my bathroom? In your bathroom. Just cable. Ju hey, just cable? Just cable. Uh, keep working at it. Guys, thanks for the afternoon. <laughs> All right, thanks for my friend. <laughs> Sorry to disappoint. <laughs> cable and satellite dish. Down. Sorry to disappoint hey, you. Come on, get another stick. <laughs> now listen. Oh, about this whole thing with um, <laughs> the Chinese. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Do you know they still have our plane. They still have our guys and our gals. We should get our guys and gals back. You, you try to keep it together during this I am. This is that tape from uh, last Friday in Chinatown in New York. <laughs> This is the first thing I got for you. Okay. That, and believe it or not, I do have a couple of Chinese friends. Very good. Not many after last Friday's show, but I got a couple. Okay. I got one guy who works at this uh, restaurant that we go to all the time. <laughs> I'm not kidding. We believe you. I know, we're your Chinese friends. <laughs> he is a guy. He's the guy who runs the Chinese restaurant that we go to. Sure. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, right, right, fine. Right. I just when you said that, you said you had Chinese friends, and then he immediately said the restaurant we go to. <laughs> That's funny. Well, I guess, that makes me laugh because you know what it sounds like. You know, it's like you sound like an old man saying, "Yeah, I go to." He's a good friend of mine. I go to his restaurant. Well, Ladies and gentlemen, I consider him to be a friend. Right. Let me say, he's friend enough. He has my email address. Okay. Very good. Okay. Very good. So he. Uh, he listened to the segment on Friday. Right. 
<laughs> now, why is that so tough? I don't to know why it's it's not it's not tough to believe. I believe it. It's funny. It makes me. Uh, <laughs> Oh, he's got a fake face. I have Chinese friends. Surprised you didn't say laundry. Well, they're acquaintances. Okay. I mean, they're not friends. Well, that's good. If he's got your email address, then that's that's a different story. So anyway, it's not like I've ever had him over to the house or anything. Hey, you technically you should probably do that to you know. What 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 defines a real friend? Somebody who's been to your home. I think if you give them your email address or if they have your phone number, I have people I consider friends that have probably never been to my home. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. if you're close enough with someone to give them your phone number or give them your email, something that's private, you know, then... Oh, yeah, I said I have people that I consider friends that have never been to my home. Everybody on this show. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. <laughs> All the time. All the time. All the time we work together. We've been in your house twice. I, mean, I usually have lots of Chinese people over on the weekends. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, you know, it's crawling with Chinese people. So anyway, he sends, he sends me up. First he calls me up. Okay. And I think he's going to bust my balls. Mm -hmm. Right? He's like, hey, it's Quan. go, hey, how you doing, man? Hard to show Friday. And I'm getting ready for... Sure. You know, the barrage says, it's funny. I want to send you a list, send you an email list. Oh, good. All right. So he says, look, look for the email. Now, as much as I laugh about... Now, this list, he sent me a list from China where they make fun of Americans. Very good. good. And the way we speak. Okay. Now, it's, it's not like playing a tape of our show and having... A Chinese disc jockey, as you mentioned on Friday, laughed hysterically at the sound of the language. <laughs> right. <laughs> Not like me laughing like Right, that. exactly. But for those Chinese who speak American, mm -hmm. this apparently is a hilarious list. All right. Okay. Of reasons why the English language is hard to learn. The bandage was wound around the wound. Apparently, this makes, you go up to a Chinaman, this is making bust the gut laughing. <laughs> I don't understand why, but it makes me laugh just because the, the word, Because the word is spelled exactly the same way. Okay. Oh, wow, the wow. bandage was wound around, around the, wound. the wound. Right. And apparently, you know, you walk into a Chinese restaurant with this, and you say this, and they'll fall to produce, produce. Mm -hmm. Ah, yeah. Okay, so, so words that are... Spelled the same and have different meanings, which we have many of in the English language. Right. right. The dump was so full that it had to refuse more refuse. Refuse. That's the funny stuff for for. I'm telling you. Yeah. For this guy, he said in Beijing they're laughing. He tells me this, in his email he sent me that he sat around at a party with this list. Right. And they read this list. And that people were laughing their asses off <laughs> at how stupid Americans are. Uh, we must polish the Polish furniture.
Making a point, they're not. No one was saying that anybody no. really talked like that. You're an embarrassment to America. Yeah. Although I'm sure there's a certain percentage of people listening to the show right now who would read them like that. But remember, <laughs> the jokes on the Chinese. Yes, of course. <laughs> okay. Because we, Americans cannot be made fun of. Hey, China, jokes on you. <laughs> right. All right. All right. Okay. Ma, ma, okay. Ma, 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 ma. Have a good day. Bye-bye. Thanks. Thanks for your input. Shocker. There he is. There you go. Thank you, a-hole. Idiot. <laughs> Dummy. Guy calls up to... What is dumbass? Honest to God. Guy yeah. calls up to state the obvious. He's wrong about something, and then he says something that we have to delete out. Mm. Oh, please. <laughs> please. <laughs> Everybody can laugh at everybody else. The number else. of your last incoming call was 703. Oh, local. Great. Give me that douchebag's number. <laughs> Call that guy back. He got off too easy. Yeah, I mean, didn't he get it when we were no, doing that? No, I mean, no, 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 he didn't get it. And the joke really was not at Americans as much as if you're talking about they give it to people who are trying to speak English. Yeah. They're basically identifying the difficulties of the English language. Right. So it's really not poking fun at Americans per se. I know a bunch of people. They would know how to say the words correct. Well, of course, we're Americans, you dumbass. Right. The funniness, you know, they're finding humor in the fact that you've got, you know, different words that, that mean different things. You got it, Robbie? Yeah. Got it. Great. Thanks. Call him back. He's a douchebag. <laughs> the joke's on you. <laughs> the joke's on them. Yeah. Jokes on China. Don't make fun of the Americans. <laughs> Patriot through and through. Christ. Welcome to the Airline Pilots Association. <laughs> if you know the extension, <laughs> you are calling. Oh, boy. If you do not know the extension and would like to... Repeat, that's it. That's the number? Double check. This. You're kidding me. Let me try it again. <laughs> You cannot take this call until you've been issued a colored numbered boarding pass. <laughs> you are kidding me. That's the number they got. I double checked it. You just got that dumb crank call. So from... is a pilot. <laughs> I'm terrified now. <laughs> ah, the joke's well, on you then. Airline Pilots Association. <laughs> there it is. The extension of the party you are calling. Press no one. If you do not know the extension and would like to transfer a, by spelling the party's last name. That's a big building. Wow. If you would like directions to the Herndon office, press three. If you have a mailbox on the system, press the pound. Jesus. Huh. Press zero or stay on the line. different, all different quadrants, but I tell you, he's nervous right press now. Press nine <laughs> to replay this menu. Yeah, okay. Welcome to the Airline Pilots Association. 
If you know the extension of the party you are calling, Never mind. Wow. if you do not know the extension and would like to transfer by spelling the party's last name, press 2. If you would like to use your telephone keypad, please spell the name of the person you would like to reach. A-S-S. <laughs> H. Okay, we gotta kill that. Okay. <laughs> we gotta kill that. Some guy whose name is Ann. Yeah. Or at least close, part of the name, probably. Close enough. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, whatever. Are you guys a pilot? No, nah, he's works for the association. Okay, yeah. I actually know somebody, somebody that works over there. Do you? Yeah, I'll try to track the guy down. Okay, we, listen, we got a break. <laughs> We're gonna get to the bottom of this whole China thing. Yeah. And the mouth. When we come right back. Number one, Arbitron Lake, the Don and Mike show. They hate books. Don and Mike. Yeah. Well said. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Is this the guy we're trying to call back? Hello? Hello? Is this the guy we're trying to call back? That's right. Hey, hey I got one question to ask you. What kind of crappy program are you running there if Randy Retard, the, the phone number getter, can't even get the number right? And he hangs up. No, it wasn't him. No, I didn't hang up. This is not the same guy? Not the same guy? I got yeah, this right is the same guy. guy. The number. What did you say when you called initially? What was your point? Recap your... Re turn your, ra turn your radio down. The, the other guy at least had his radio down. The, the other time I called, I was telling you about how most Americans don't speak that way. Uh -huh. And what did you... The big... The well, then you wouldn't know that. All right, you know what it is, Abe. He would. He obviously is the guy. That's yeah, the guy. but that's so the that, number that's... that I got off that phone line. All right, I double-checked. Hold on, douchebag. I mean, hang up. What? Hang up. Well, you got the number right this time? Or do you need me to write it down for you and send it to you in the mail? Hang up, douchebag. All right, bye. People are so nice. Don't touch the phone. Okay. One, two, zero, two. Four, three, seven. Okay, now pick it up. Okay. Just, just pick it up. Pick up line six. And get the last four digits. Okay. Gotta walk that boy through everything. It's not the number they gave me last time. It was the wrong area code, even. I know. Well, even when we do that, it is, it is, a, it is a fallible system. You do get wrong numbers. Yeah. So what are you going to repeat? Hi, Rob. How you doing? <laughs> hey, hey, hey. How you doing? 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 Incoming call was one two zero two four three seven. How you doing? I mean, because the douchebag's got the balls to call us back. All right now, let's see if we've got his number. See if we got it right. Oh, hold on. He wasn't a pilot after all. <laughs> hey, this is Douchebag America. Can I help you? All right, now we got yeah. the right number. All right, Douchebag, you're on the air. We have your number. All right, right we have hey, your number. How come you can't ever let somebody call in and uh, 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 listen? What you said, we're not allowed to broadcast. It's not our choice. It's the choice of this company. Oh, come and, on. This is not a curse word or anything. And furthermore. Mm -hmm. Furthermore, it is, you're such a dumbass, you call in, you don't understand the premise.